Calls are being made for Tourism Minister Lindiwe Sisulu to be hauled before the ANC's Integrity Commission for defying President Cyril Ramaphosa. It comes after she refused a statement released by the presidency on Thursday about the outcome of a meeting President uh, she had with President Cyril Ramaphosa with her on the opinion piece she wrote, Hey Mzansi, have we seen justice, in which she criticized black judges. The presidency statement says she had been taken to task, was apologetic, and agreed to retract the piece. However, a short while later, the minister released a statement of her own refuting this. The president then released a second statement saying it stands by its initial communication. What do we make of this back and forth between the president and a standing member of parliament, political analyst Professor Tutulejo Matibisi joins us now to discuss this. Professor, very good morning to you. The back and forth, so many questions, um, a stunning about turn on Thursday night, uh, Minister Lindy Wesusulu essentially saying that President Cyril Ramaphosa is lying. Given her history as a cabinet minister for around two decades or so, is this a response, does it come as a surprise? Hi, good morning, Mpo, and good morning to South Africans. Uh, this issue has been ventilated so much in the public domain, and it raises several questions. If I was a labor expert, I would have bluntly stated that this is a sheer disrespect in subordination to your superior. Uh, but I'm a social scientist, I'm a sociologist, and for me it is all about timing. In politics, timing plays a significant role. Uh, and just very briefly, we've seen how communities, uh, uh, there's a spike in service delivery protest each time when it's an election year because it has to do with the bargaining uh, power that communities have. But with the minister, it's going to be very difficult whether is she doing this deliberately uh, or not. But fact of the matter is you've been hauled to a meeting uh, with the president. Uh, but I also don't understand why the apology has been issued by the presidency. That, for me, was the first mistake. Uh, it, it actually set a very dangerous precedent. I've never seen it where people will go and apologize publicly on behalf of uh, the, the, the one who is implicated. And I think that is where the problem lies. Uh, and, and many of us, even before uh, there was an announcement made by uh, Minister Sisulu, already knew that something is not uh, uh, right there because the presidency was quite adamant that the minister has to apologize. But I strongly believe that Minister Sisulu uh, uh, crossed the line uh, and uh, she might have undue influence from somewhere else uh, to say you need to stand firm. It is an elective conference here within the African National Congress. Uh, but fact of the matter is if Minister Sisulu has aspiration of becoming the leader of the African National Congress, for me, uh, this is definitely not the way how you have to go around things. You need to be bold. She needs to be assertive. Uh, but for me, it sends the wrong message, and especially if we look at the ill discipline currently happening within the African National Congress. I want us to touch on the perhaps your assertion on how she might have undue influence from somewhere else in a short while. But b before we go there, let's talk about the the ripple effect, the implications of this. I mean, um, she says one thing, presidency says another, she says something else, and presidency says they stand by what they initially said on that uh, apology. What are the implications? I mean, disrespecting the most senior uh, person in government surely will come with some repercussions. Well, uh, those repercussions should have come along, came a long way. But it, 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 it's not forthcoming, and that is the problem with uh, our presidency. Uh, fact of the matter is, I refer to timing. If this happened a couple of months after the president has been elected as president of the African National Congress, I strongly believe that there would have been a call for the minister to have been to be charged. And this is the same that happened now. But fact of the matter is, the president and those who support him. Uh, also have to be very cautious how they deal with that. And, and whether we like it as a public, because we want action to be taken, but remember it's all about 
political expediency. And fact of the matter is we've already seen uh, in the past the, 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 the Women's League of the ANC issuing a statement saying that there's absolutely nothing wrong with what the minister stated. So that in itself already indicates that there are other uh, you know, branches and, and, and structures of the African National Congress who stand firmly behind the minister. And we all know how you become a president of the African National Congress, or how you get elected. It is uh, by the structures of the African National Congress. So I think it's a bit of a, a cautious approach. But the fact of the matter is, can the president afford, uh, you know, uh, this is a reputational damage, not only for its own office, but also for the organization and for the country. Because back of the matter is, Minister Sisulu is a public uh, representative, and there had to be consequences for uh, the way she conducted her job. Given what we've been hearing, or perhaps uh, you know, the muscle of the ANC Integrity Commission, do we see them uh, taking some sort of uh, you know, hard stance on her? Will there be recourse? I don't know whether we can even talk about an integrity committee or whether it is independent because it seems as if uh, the integrity committee of the African National Congress needs to be called upon, the matter to be referred. You never see a proactive uh, stance from them, but perhaps that's how disciplinary matters also in general, uh, uh, you know, are being handled. Uh, as a disciplinary committee, you wait up until matters are being referred to. But fact of that matter, we all know that that matter will be referred back to the top uh, five because we can't talk about our top six for obvious reasons. Uh, and, and that is where the problem lies. You don't have an in independent committee which can independently take a decision on matters within the African National Congress. So fact of the matter is it is a vicious cycle uh, where the next uh, level of, of, of you know, uh, administration need to take a decision which should actually be taken somewhere else. And at the end of the day, I don't foresee that the integrity committee uh, will uh, deal effectively with this matter. In 2017, uh, Minister Sisulu had ambitions, of course, uh, of uh, being deputy president, or, or and, and she lost to David Mabuza. It, you know, with what we're seeing here and, and talk about her perhaps uh, positioning herself as, as the face of the RET faction, um, you know, do you think that she could be jumping out of the starting blocks too early in terms of perhaps her, her strategy going into elections? Does she have the substance that's needed? Yeah, that's where I'm going to differ with many commentators because it, it's going to be very difficult to know how sincere the minister was it just an innocent opinion piece uh, where as pub a public figure she thought that well these are the viewpoints that I have let me at least uh, share that with the public uh, that is my starting point the fact of the matter is if this is her way of trying to ascend uh, to the position of being president of the African National Congress, I definitely don't think it's the right strategy. But remember, uh, you know, <laughs> when you are faced uh, with certain challenges, you need to do the unconventional. And I think this is an unconventional approach where you stand firm. And we have seen in the past, play the victim, uh, you know, disrupt uh, uh, normality. Uh, and in this way, force the president to perhaps take action, action that will, at a later stage, uh, you know, characterize the, the, the minister as a victim within the African National Congress. And we've seen how victims within the African National Congress are being supported and are being celebrated. Mm. Uh, and I don't even, we just have to look back a couple of years what happened. And we should never say never within the African National Congress. She might seem to be, uh, you know, uh, a challenge here, but at the end of the day, I strongly believe that there are uh, individuals and structures within the African National Congress who support the minister on this one. Very well. Thank you so much uh, for your time and analysis. Political analyst from the University of the Free State, Professor Sutulejo Matibisi, saying never say never within the African Congress. You never know.